Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Back to School Welcome for Edgemont Junior Senior High School. We thank you for taking a little time out of your night to join us. We have about a half hour where we'd like to give an overview of the year, share some important information, have you hear some uh, important words from community members who do so much to help our students in the school, and then leave a little time for questions that you may have. And we're trying to do all of that by 6.58, so you're not late to your first period class. Join with me on the call uh, are my colleagues, Ms. Uh, Jennifer Johnson and Ms. Mary Rose Joseph. And we're fortunate to have our Board of Education President, Judy Seif, and Jen Ratner, who is the chairperson for the Edgemont School Foundation, and Leon Foon, who's one of the uh, co-presidents of the PTSA. So with that, I'd like to turn over to Judy Seif to say a few words. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, as uh, some of you may know and some of you may not, the Board of Education has three primary duties. Um, they are to um, hire or fire the superintendent. They are to uh, pass the budget and uh, to set the policy of the school which forms the framework for all of the work that is then uh, created and done by um, the administration and, and the faculty. Um, as a board member, this is uh, now my sixth year. I um, have raised two daughters who went through K through 12. Um, one graduated from the high school in 2014 and the other in 2017. Um, uh, board terms generally run for three years. Uh, and as a general rule and a general practice uh, in the community, lesser rule, um, people serve no more than two terms. So at the end of this year, I will be stepping down um, as will um, one other board member, uh, Alec Clark, who was the president for the past two years because it will also be the end of his two terms. Um, and we encourage people who have significant involvement in the community and have lived here and have an interest in, um, in participating in a um, collaborative conversation uh, to, to think about running for the board. And with that, I will turn it back over to Kyle. Thank you, Judy. We appreciate all of your support and leadership. With that, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Jennifer Ratner. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jen Ratner and I have two kids in Sealy. Um, this is my fifth year on the school foundation board and I am the chairperson with Elizabeth Vickery. Um, for those of you not familiar with the school foundation, we work hand to hand with the district, the administrators, the staff members and all the teachers on a yearly basis all year, um, granting monetary amounts to help enrich and Edgemont education. Um, on average, we grant out around $100,000. Um, for those of you in the 7th through 12th campus, the most recent grants are two flexible use classrooms, um, which are A5 and E6. For those of you with children in them, please ask them how fabulous they look. Um, unfortunately, during the height of the pandemic last year, they weren't arranged properly, but Kyle has assured us that they are up and running and the kids are really thriving in the flexible use classrooms. Um, we have also helped out last year with the virtual learning, the microphones, the design of the e-lab, and a recurring annual grant for construction of Blandford Field. Um, we work solely on donations, so I really encourage you guys to take a look at our website. You will see past grants, we have pictures, um, and we are here to answer any of your questions if you want to donate or if you want to get involved. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Jen, and thank you to the ESF for all the support that you've shown over the years. We appreciate it and it makes a big difference. Absolutely. With, with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Leon. Hi, 
Hi, everyone. My name is Leon. As a new co-president, I'm very excited and I look forward to working with the PTSA board. Your support makes everything we do possible. On behalf of everyone at the PTSA, I cannot thank you enough for being a member. If you need any help with membership sign up, please give a shout. We're all eager to support Edgemont. Help us help you. We look forward to seeing you at our next exciting event. As a, since I'm new at my role, Nareen Jabor, who's my other co-president, has kindly recorded the video for tonight. Carl, would you like to play the video? Our students, teachers, and families still need our support. We would love for each family to find a way in which they can be involved this year at EHS. So I hope you will consider getting involved this year by becoming a member and coming together as a community so that we can provide our children the best school experience possible. Please don't hesitate to get in touch this year with myself or any other board members. We would love to help you find your perfect spot at EHS. Thanks again for being here tonight. We look forward to getting to know you this school year. I want to say thank you to Noreen and to Leong, who spend so much time um, working at the school, doing so much for our students and for teachers to make things work, including uh, financial support for all the different activities we have here. I think there may have been a little technical difficulty with the sound. So when I um, share my weekly update, I'll be sure to include this video in that update so you can hear all of it. Welcome. With that, we just wanna give a couple uh, reminders to make sure that tonight runs smoothly. Again, you will need your child's Edgemont email account and their password. You also will need their schedule. And we've shared this Google Sheet that has all of the links that you need. And you'll notice that there are three different help desks. So if you need any support, please make sure you join those um, help desks. We have counselors and psychologists who will be there to help answer questions. And again, we're gonna start promptly at 7 p.m. for our first period class. I'd like to just give you an overview of, of what the school year has been like so far. Uh, we welcome back 964 students for the first day of classes of that group with 38 new students, 154 seventh graders and seven new faculty members. We had a, a number of events that we held over the summer to try to make the transition back to school a smooth one. We had a new family orientation for families that just moved to Edgemont. We had several different student meetings that were held virtually as well as several uh, virtual parent meetings. For uh, students who were in seventh grade, we had an on deck day where they could come in, meet with their counselors, uh, do a tour of the campus and have questions answered. And we've also had um, seventh and eighth grade orientations for the first couple of days of, of class. And we think that gave students a great foundation to understand who to go to or where to go if they needed any support. We also had our annual senior road painting take place earlier in the year, which was a lot of excitement for that. On Monday, we had our seventh graders involved in a mountain workshop where they work together collaboratively to solve different uh, tasks. And it's a great opportunity to develop skill building um, strengths that will help them in the classroom. Our clubs are currently meeting. Uh, we will hold an activities fair later in October. 
uh, but it's great to have clubs meeting again on campus. And then finally, our athletic programs are up and running. We've had a lot of competitions already. And I want to thank the E-Club for their support at all the homecoming events. Uh, if you were able to make it to a game, I think you would have seen a lot of excitement and a lot of energy that was missed in the, in the last year. So thank you to the E-Club for that support. With that, I'll turn it over to Ms. John, uh, Ms. Joseph for some words about communication. Thank you, Mr. Hozier. Yeah, so it's been wonderful welcoming the almost 9,000 students back to campus. The energy has been great. It's so it's so um, enjoyable for us to see kids using the outdoor space, the classroom space, and teachers also feeling that same energy. One of the ways we'll be trying to stay co connected with you throughout the year is by our modes of communication. All teachers at EHS have Google Classroom pages where they post uh, assignments for the, the unit or the class and they have due dates. It's a great way for kids to stay organized and stay connected with your teachers. S students will have questions about content and due dates. It's so important that we, enc we encourage them to communicate directly with their teachers and attend extra help as needed. They're the first line of communication. As parents also, you'll have questions about maybe content or due dates as well. We do encourage you to also start by talking to the teacher first. They're the ones who assign uh, the different assignments and the due dates, so it's a great way to start. In addition to teachers, we have plenty of support services on campus. Our counselors and psychologists are, are there to support your child, so please reach out to them as well. And then you're always welcome to reach out, as, uh, reach out to us as well. The way we'll be communicating with you are, are in many different modes. Every week, Mr. Hozier sends out weekly updates, which talks about things that are happening from you know week to week, athletics, clubs, etc. Every Saturday, you'll get that. We'll be sending timely emails regarding different school topics, and it'll be shared based on what's happening. Just recently, you received some emails about safety um, fire drills, and they all went pretty well. In addition to us reaching out to you, we're also always open to your questions. If you have questions about anything going on at uh, Edgemont, you can email uh, either Mr. Hozier, Ms. Johnson, or myself. And we also encourage you to please uh, communicate your concerns at a time that we can still resolve some of your um, concerns. Uh, and we, we look forward to a good year with your kids. And I turn it over to Ms. Johnson now to talk about what to expect for the year. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Hi, everybody. Good evening and welcome. So for this year, we're very pleased to return to somewhat of a more normal year. And as part of that, we have a full extracurricular program on offer with a full complement of sports and clubs. And as Kyle mentioned earlier, we will have our activities fair in the next couple of weeks. And we'll be sure to let you know and your children know so they can come out and see what kinds of clubs and options interest them. In addition to sports and clubs, we're also working on trips and other events for the year. As Kyle also mentioned, our seventh graders recently participated in the Mountain Workshop Program, and that was a big success. And our eighth grade team of teachers is currently planning on an event for our eighth graders. We're very pleased that this year our seniors will once again get to participate in the Rocking Horse Ranch Day, which is always a highlight of senior year. And it seems far away now, but I'm sure it will be here before we know it. We are looking forward to prom and graduation later in the spring. Some new items for this year is our cafeteria. Um, it is going cashless as of October 12th. And the reason for that is to move the line along more quickly and more efficiently and just get um, the students through the line. Now, please remember, you can always bring cash to put on the account, as well as give your child a check to deposit. And of course, you can always use the pay for it system where you debit your credit card. As Ms. Joseph said, we are open to any kinds of questions or concerns you might have. And if you have students in grades seven, eight, or nine, you probably already know that those are uh, led by teams of teachers. And if you do have questions about those grades, please reach out to the teacher leaders and you can even arrange and they will help you arrange a meeting with all of your child's teachers and the entire team to address any of your questions or concerns. And even if you have students in grades 10, 11, and 12, also reach out to the teachers. They welcome your questions and lines of communication are always open. And of course, you can always reach out to any of the three of us. And now I'll turn it back to Kyle. Thank you, Jen. Just wanna uh, give a couple updates on health and safety. In terms of uh, prevention, we're happy to report that we've only had three positive uh, cases on campus that, um, and they actually came from um, the end of summer into the beginning of school. So 
we want to keep doing what we know works. Uh, we will continue to mandate masks indoors. Masks are optional outside. We know it's super important for everyone on campus to wash their hands throughout the day. And probably most important is if you have a child who is sick, please keep them home. Uh, make sure that we don't have sick people on campus. I think that's the number one thing we can do as a community to keep everyone safe. If your child is sick and they uh, miss school, then you are required if they're sick with COVID symptoms, if the child needs to be cleared by a doctor or produce a negative COVID test and then share, um, update our health office so they have that information as well. Again, we're all in this together, so we wanna make sure we can do everything we can to keep everyone safe. We've been fortunate with the weather. It's been um, a, a cool cu couple weeks, which is great. Uh, we know the weather has turned and it's gonna get colder. So the outdoor spaces that we use, we wanna try to use those as long as we can. Classes meet outside sometimes. I would say the majority of students eat lunch outside and the windows are gonna to continue to be open to help with ventilation. So we're encouraging students to wear layers to school. It's cold in the morning, so we want them to have layers. They can take those off later in the day. Um, but just please be mindful that it will be colder in classrooms as the weather gets colder and we want to use the outdoor space as much as we can. And then finally, we will continue to have our safety drills. We have to do eight fire or evacuation drills throughout the year and four lockdowns. We've done two fire drills so far this year, so we have six more to do and we will notify you before we do our first lockdown drill. The lockdown drill, uh, we will uh, ensure that students stay uh, socially distanced. We're not gonna have them participate in a typical lockdown drill um, just because of COVID concerns, but be on the lookout for that communication regarding the first lockdown drill. We're about on schedule, which is great. We have uh, 11 minutes to answer questions. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and Jen, would you like to uh, see what questions we have and ask the first one? Sure. The first one is about the pay for it system. The, the parent asks, can they use credit cards to use the pay for it lunch system? Yes, a credit card can be used. Uh, I share directions on how to do that in one of my weekly updates. If you have any issues, please email one of us and we'll be able to help you. The next question is about the bathrooms. The parent says, it used to be one person at a time and now more than one student can go into the bathroom. Um, is that safe? When we had half the students on campus, uh, the idea of having one person in the bathroom, we could make that work. But now that we have almost a thousand students on campus, that would present a problem if, if we limited the bathroom to one person. If students continue to wear their mask and, and do everything that they do in the classrooms, we think that there's not an issue to have students uh, in the bathrooms. Again, there's bathroom stalls, so that helps divide students. Uh, we don't want students hanging out in the bathroom. We want them in class, but uh, we don't see that being a safety concern. The next question is about the e-building. This parent has heard that there is a broken uh, unit in the e-building, a ventilation unit. What is the status with that unit? Yes, I shared an email um, about two weeks ago that the ventilation system broke. Unfortunately, it's a very old system and the parts that we need, the factory isn't producing those parts at this point because of COVID. So we have contacted um, maintenance help to see if they can do anything with the unit. So far, we've not been able to resolve the problem, but we'll continue to work on that. And as soon as I have an update, I'll send that update out to the community. The next question is about any current COVID cases at the junior senior high school. Are they, and if so, how many? And why aren't parents receiving an email each time there is a case like they had in the past? So we had three positive cases so far. And again, those all came from the start of the school year, really the end of the summer. And in terms of communication, at the end of last year, Dr. Newell wasn't sending out notices every time there was a positive case. She would send out an, a weekly update to let you know if we had any positive cases. And we'll continue to do that moving forward. The next question is about extra help. Will extra help be virtual? We, we, we're moving away from uh, virtual education. We learned last year, and I think we know that the support that students can be provided is far greater when the teacher and the student is in the, in the classroom. So as of now, extra help won't be virtual. We'll continue to hold extra help in person. 
The next qu question is from a parent of an eighth grader or a couple eighth graders. If the parent misses meetings or has any concerns, will someone reach out to the parent? Would uh, Ms. Johnson, would you like to take that as the AP for grade seven and eight? Sure. So yes, if, if a teacher has a concern with your child, they will definitely reach out. Um, however, at any time, if you have a question or concern, I strongly suggest that you reach out as well, just so you, you, the teachers may not be aware of the concern that you have. So certainly reach out. Teachers are more than happy to respond to you. And like I mentioned before, set up a meeting with the other teachers, whatever makes most sense given your situation. The next question is about a school, and this is for tonight, for back to school night. If the child is in Phaedrus or the alternative school, do they stay for four periods? I, uh, Pam and Corey, I believe, shared an email with Phaedrus parents. Uh, I don't know that's going to be four periods. Uh, I would imagine it might be longer than one, but I'd say just join the link um, and they'll be able to give you more guidance. And I, uh, I, I don't know the answer for sure, but join the link. They'll be able to help. Another question about tonight. Um, this parent has multiple students. Do they use, do they sign in with each student's email or can they just sign in with one student and click on the various teachers? As long as you're using a Edgemont email, it doesn't matter which uh, child's email you're using, that will be able to uh, allow you to access the meeting. You don't need to switch back and forth if you have multiple students. Just use the one email and that should get you into all the meets. The next question is about pickup um, and the traffic. It says before the pandemic, we used to line up the cars throughout the lot um, and this allowed more cars to wait on campus. Any chance of this system coming back? Yeah, it's a good question. The first couple of days, the lines, uh, it just took way too long, both at uh, arrival and pickup. The last couple of times that I've timed it, it went from, um, the departure ending at 326 to 324 to 320. I think that if we can stick to that time frame, we'll probably continue to use the approach that we are. The concern with lining cars up in the parking lot is that the more cars that you have stopped in the parking lot, the more students need to cross the parking lot using the crosswalk. And it just creates a bit of a safety concern where we don't wanna take an additional risk where a student could get hit. So for now, we're gonna keep using the structure that we have. We'll continue to monitor that, but it's truly just a safety concern of having students, more students uh, crossing the parking lot with oncoming traffic. The next question is about the um, pay for it system. The parent says uh, it does have a transaction fee, so they might prefer to send their child to school with cash. Can they put a lump sum on their student ID card without a fee? And if they just give cash to the cashier, doesn't that clog up the line? Is there a simpler way to do this? Cash works. I actually did that myself. Um, thankful to have the cafeteria open again for lunch. So yes, if you have money, uh, it, the cashier can process that very quickly. That's a very easy way to add money to the account. Another pay for a question. This parent writes that the auto replenish is not working for her. Is this a known issue? I think we had a um, one parent email, but I don't know that it's widespread. So if, if that parent could email us and I'll follow up with the cafeteria manager. The next two questions are both about uh, if a child is out sick, will they be able to attend their classes online? We are not offering a, a virtual option for students who are sick. If a student is sick, they're sick, they can access Google Classroom to see what work is missed. The um, the challenge of trying to allow students go remote day to day and the in negative impact that that has on students in the classroom and the education that takes place, we're just not in a position to allow that to happen this year. If a student is quarantined and that's documented, then we would have a virtual option for that student, but not, not for six students. Okay, and the next and, and last as of now question is, if a child runs into technical difficulties while submitting homework online, what recourse does the child have to confirm submission? If you're worried about a deadline, one thing a student could do is to email the teacher and uh, include the work as an attachment to show that the work is done. I think that's probably uh, the safest thing to do. But uh, if the student needs technical support, I'd say also talk to the teacher to figure out what needs to be done so that's not an issue moving forward. 
And that was our last question. Great. We do have three more minutes. The Google form to submit questions was in the reminder email that went out yesterday. So we'll wait another minute and see if there's any questions, although we do want to make sure that we don't hold you up and that you're on time to your first period. Jen, any other questions? No, no more questions. Okay. So we hope tonight goes well, that you are able to get a sense of who your child's uh, teacher is and that it's an informative experience. Just wanna say again, um, last year was a really tough year. We appreciate how the community came together to make it through. There's a, an excitement that you can feel every single morning and uh, appreciation that everyone on campus has to be together. We're excited for this year. If you, um, if you do need anything, please reach out to us. We're here to help. If you have any trouble tonight, again, please remember we have the help desk. Click on one of those links and a counselor or psychologist will be able to help you. And thank you for joining us this evening. Have a good night.